What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Studio Saturdays. Today we're going to be playing around with this image, um, but one thing we're actually going to be doing is showcasing uh, different uses of the transform tool. If you don't know what the transform tool is, it's the ability to take stuff like this with stuff like this. So, obviously here in this image, my coffee cup wasn't very lustrous. It didn't have any bubbles or anything. It looked kind of flat plain. It was boring. So what I did was I took this little thing. I just kind of went around the coffee cup right here. Now we're just going to control C, <clears throat> control V. So now we have our image in here that we're going to be using and then we're going to hit control or command T. So this is what your transform tool does. So it's able to make images larger, smaller, stuff like that. But there's also hidden uses to it. So if you hold control and grab one of the sides, it only warps out one of the sides. If you hold alt, it pulls only the side image. So it ratios that way. So if you hold control on a corner, you can angle it like so. You hold control in the center, it's just going to shrink it down, and all stuff like that. But there's also another thing where you are standardly in tree free transform, but there's also scale, rotate, skew, distort, perspective, and warp. So we're going to be using perspective and warp here. So first we're going to click into perspective, and every time you click on a corner in perspective, it's going to push to you. So if you pull to the side, so if you go horizontal, um, it pulls the image to you. If you go inwards towards that center line, it's going to pinch on the image there. So if you use the center line as a reference point here, you can see where it's going to go. So we're going to cancel that really quick. Come back here, go back to perspective. And then one thing you can also do is if you move upwards, it's going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So it'll push the one side out further or it'll pinch it in towards that line. The thing you can really use for your advantage is note the center dots. Those are basically anchor points. Um, so those are going to control where your thing is going to go. So as we can see here, our coffee cups angled uh, like this, or I guess like this, towards the camera. Um, but the shot we have is angled like this. So we have to get it like this to basically match up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lower the transparency so I can really see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be the right size yet, but you can put it back to free transform. Basically scale it down to where you think it's going to be able to fit the cup. Obviously all coffee cups aren't the exact same size, so it's totally not anything you should worry about. But then we're going to go into perspective here. And we're going to have to push this out. So one thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to pinch these in. We're going to have to spread the bottom section out. So when you see when we pull those bottom points to the side, it starts to lift up so when you're pulling those two planes on the bottom, it's going to stretch it and push it up. So it's going to be leveling towards you now. So you can see we're almost at the same plane. But we can kind of push that back a little bit more. And then we're going to go back to free transform. We're just going to scale it down a bit. And then you can also rotate by holding off to the side. So we can rotate just like that. But one thing I'm going to do now is we're going to go to our warp tool. So as you can see, the edge right here isn't against the edge of the mug or the ring of the mug. So we could pull these points to the edge. And then obviously these points are basically going to be hidden. So you can kind of make it go outside the line there. I think that looks good like that. So now we're going to keep the transparency. We're just going to grab an eraser tool. Make sure the eraser is roughly 50% hardness, 100% opacity. And you're just going to come over to the side here, shrink the brush size down, and just going to erase where the mug should be. And if you go in a little bit, it gives it a little bit more realistic perspective because it's going to have a shadow cast across here. Now. 
And just like that, now we have a cup of coffee in there. We can even go filter. We're going to add some Gaussian blur to this, just because it shouldn't be completely in focus. We need a curves adjustment layer now. So we're going to grab our curves adjustment layer, and we're going to pull up on this section of it. You see how it's going to start to add in that effect that's all over the rest of the image, that kind of dulled down toning? That's what we're looking for right here. So you see how it's just kind of adding a little bit of dull toning in. That's what we're looking for. And you just even put it right at 65% looks good to me. And now you can see we took a plain boring cup of coffee. And we made it at least have a little bit of a little bit of action going on to it. So it doesn't look so dull, doesn't look so dry, but it's on the same plane. It looks like it's a cup of coffee that's supposed to be there. So that's what we're seeking, that's what we're doing. And that's essentially the difference between a mundane image and a quality image. Now we're also just gonna go to a new file now. We're just gonna open a uh, standard little square here. We're gonna take the background color. We're gonna fill it with white. The next thing we do, we're gonna add in a new layer now. We're just gonna put a standard black dot, like so. Just a little black dot. And we're gonna control T it. So now you guys will be able to see in a different aspect of it. So when we scale stuff, you can see how it scales based off of where you pull. So that's just general maintaining ratio is what scales use for. It maintains ratio no matter what. Then you obviously you can have your rotate, so obviously with the circle, it's just gonna spin. But you can do all of that with free transform just by pulling on the corners. It'll keep it in its same shape. And when you go to rotate, you just slide away from center, like so, and go outside that little blue box that you see, and you'll be perfectly fine. So that's all done with free transform. Scale and skew can be done from free transform. Skew tends to pull one side to the other. We can make it more oval, or you can pinch it down but it doesn't maintain a ratio. So when you grab one corner, the anchor point becomes the next corner. So you see how the center point doesn't hold the corner the same way as perspective does? So your anchor points become the opposite dot on the far side, or the furthest dot down the line on the outside box. So skew, anchor points become the bottom corners of whatever point you grab. So as you can see here, my anchor point, because I'm grabbing the top line, when you grab the center, the top line, your bottom line will become your anchor point. Same thing on the sides. You have the sides, the furthest point is going to be your anchor point. Now if you go to distort, you can see how it pushes and pulls the image based on where you put it, but it's the same thing. It still holds your anchor point is going to be the far side, but you can smash it a little bit more than you would with other things. And if you come over the other side, you can even get it to do some crazy stuff like this. Um, and then perspective we already went over. Perspective is basically the angle at which you're seeing something. So if we go into perspective, how it kind of shifts and changes um, an object a little bit more drastically. So if I wanted something to look like it was closer, more so it looks like a planet, we could have a planet here. But then say I wanted to level it out, it'll make it just as wide and it'll start to make it flatter so it looks more like a lake now. And then warp. I like warp a bit more because you have these points at which you can pull. So if you really find yourself in a difficult spot with an image, you can more or less pull, pull and push to a more unique shape than you would with any of the other ones. As you can see here, we can push and pull this to the warp and you can even grab inside the grid lines and tend to push things a little bit further inside the grid. So then you can really start to make some weird funky shapes going down just like this, just from using this, which is useful if you want to make a flag design or if you want to change how a flag looks in an image, you can use this to add ripples and warps to the flag, which is a great effect. So just from standard transform, if you grab the corners and hold control, your anchor points become the two corners as well. So as you can see, two corners don't move no matter how far I push it. If you grab the center while holding control, it stretches the image. So centers stretch the image along the center line, corners stretch the image along the corner, but your anchor points then become the two sides.
and then if you hold Alt and pull, it scales it. So if you hold Alt, it scales the image. And just like that, you can use that to make your coffee less gross. So good coffee, bad coffee. So if you guys did find this useful, informative, or mundane and boring about learning about tools, let me know what you would like to see in the next episode of Studio Saturdays. But until then, have a great weekend, guys, and I'll see you next Saturday.